Portions of Power From A Separate Reality Chapter 2 Why haven't you told me this before? He said without looking at me. I did not know what to say. I shrugged my shoulders and told him I didn't think it was important. It's damn important, he said. Vicente is a first-rate sorcerer. He gave you something to plant because he had his reasons. And if you encountered three people who seemed to have popped out of nowhere right after you planted it, there was a reason for that too. But only a fool like you would disregard the incident and think it wasn't important. I argued that I could find no harm in having met Don Vicente, that I was charmed by his manners and his kindness. Don Juan shook his head from side to side and in a half-kidding tone expressed his bewilderment at what he called my baffling good luck. He said that my visiting Don Vicente was like walking into a lion's den armed with a twig. Don Juan seemed to be agitated, yet I could see no reason for his concern. Don Vicente was a beautiful man. He seemed so frail. His strangely haunting eyes made him seem almost ethereal. I asked Don Juan how a beautiful person like that could be dangerous. You're a damn fool, he said and looked at me stern for a moment. He won't cause you any harm himself. But knowledge is power. And once a man embarks on the road of knowledge, he's no longer liable for what may happen to those who come in contact with him. You should have paid him a visit when you knew enough to defend yourself. Not from him, but from the power he has harnessed. Which, by the way, is not his or anybody else's. Upon hearing you were my friend, Vicente assumed that you knew how to protect yourself and then made you a gift. He apparently liked you, it must have made you a great gift, and you chucked it. What a pity. What do you think I did wrong, Don Juan? I said just to continue the conversation. Everything. But I followed Don Vicente's instructions to the letter. So what? Don't you understand that to follow his instructions was meaningless? Why? Because those instructions were designed for someone who could see. Not for an idiot who got out with his life just by sheer luck. You went to see Vincente without preparation. He liked you and gave you a gift. And that gift could have easily cost you your life. Don't I see things as they really are? No. Your eyes have learned only to look. Take, for example, the three people you encountered. The three Mexicans. You have described them in detail and even told me what clothes they wore. And that only proved to me you did not see them at all. If you were capable of seeing, you would have known on the spot that they were not people. They were not people? What were they? They were not people, that's all. That's impossible. They were just like you and me. No, they were not. I'm sure of it. Don Juan said the three people I had seen, whom he called those who were not people, were in reality Don Vicente's allies. The allies are neither good nor evil but are put to use by the sorcerers for whatever purpose they see fit. I like the little smoke as an ally because it doesn't demand much from me. It's constant and fair. How does an ally look to you, Don Juan? Those three people I saw, for instance, who look like ordinary people to me, how would they look to you? They would look like ordinary people. Then how can you tell them apart from real people? Real people look like luminous eggs when you see them. Non-people always look like people. That's what I meant when I said you cannot see an ally. The allies take different forms. They look like dogs, coyotes, birds, even tumbleweeds, or anything else. The only difference is that when you see them, they look just like what they're pretending to be. Everything has its own way of being when you see. Just like men look like eggs, other things look like something else. But the allies can be seen only in the form they're portraying. That form is good enough to fool the eyes. Our eyes, that is. A dog is never fooled. Neither is a crow. Why would they want to fool us? I think we are the clowns. We fool ourselves. The allies just take the outward appearance of whatever is around, and then we take them for what they are not. It is not their fault that we have taught our eyes only to look at things. I'm not clear about their function, Don Juan. What do allies do in the world? 
This is like asking me what men do in the world. I really don't know. We are here, that's all. And the Allies are here, like us. And maybe they have been here before us. We men know very little about the world. A coyote knows much more than we do. A coyote is hardly ever fooled by the world's appearance. Can a coyote see an ally? Well, certainly. How does an ally look to a coyote? I would have to be a coyote to know that. I can tell you, however, that to a crow, it looks like a pointed hat, round and wide on the bottom, ending in a long point. Some of them shine, but the majority are dull and appear to be very heavy. They resemble a dripping piece of cloth. They are foreboding shapes. How do they look to you when you see them, Don Juan? I've told you already, they look like whatever they're pretending to be. They take any shape or size that suits them. They can be shaped like a pebble or a mountain. Do they talk or laugh or make any noise? In the company of men, they behave like men. In the company of animals, they behave like animals. Animals are usually afraid of them, however. If they are accustomed to seeing the allies, they leave them alone. We ourselves do something similar. We have scores of allies among us, but we don't bother them. Since our eyes can only look at things, we don't notice them. Do you mean that some people I see in the street are not really people? I asked, truly bewildered by his statement. Some of them are not, he said emphatically. His statement seemed preposterous to me, yet I could not seriously conceive of Don Juan's making such a remark purely for effect. I told him it sounded like a science fiction tale about beings from another planet. He said he did not care how it sounded, but some people in the street were not people. Why must you think that every person in a moving crowd is a human being? He asked with an air of utmost seriousness. He went on to say how much he liked to watch busy places with lots of people, and how he would sometimes see a crowd of men who looked like eggs, and among the mass of egg-like creatures, he would spot one who looked just like a person. It's very enjoyable to do that, he said laughing. Or at least, it's enjoyable for me. I like to sit in parks and bus depots and watch. Sometimes I can spot an ally right away. At other times, I can see only real people. Once I saw two allies sitting in a bus side by side. That's the only time in my life I have seen two together. Did it have a special significance for you to see two of them? Certainly. Anything they do is significant. From their actions, a brujo can sometimes draw his power. Even if a brujo does not have an ally of his own, as long as he knows how to see, he can handle power by watching the acts of the allies. My benefactor taught me to do that, and for years before I had my own ally, I watched for allies among crowds of people, and every time I saw one, it taught me something. You found three together. What a magnificent lesson you wasted.